went from depression to expression. Mm -hmm. So I then um, set up the page and there was a few situations, a few, there was a few deaths in my local town. Um, and I was like, I want to teach people the power of like the beliefs and, and, and knowing that, you know, you're an amazing human being. Like we mm -hmm. are actually amazing human beings. Mm -hmm. And in my first video, I talked about, you know, we are breathing miracles. Like you, me, me and you, Shami, we're the same. And so is everybody watching this. We live under the same sky. We yeah. live in the same universe and we're, we're all breathing. Mm -hmm. And quite often we, we are so super busy. People can be so super busy and we're getting things done that we even forget to appreciate our own self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's something that I'm all about now and helping other people to be about to appreciate their body, their mind, their heart, their intuition, their imagination, their dreams, their goals. Yeah. You know? So that's that's basically that part of the, of the story, you know. I, I learned uh, last over the last four years, this is how I was able to, to know what I was saying. I was saying a lot of self-doubt, uh, talking a lot of, I was playing the victim. I was, yeah. everything was happening to me. And yeah. so life can happen to you or for you. And yeah. I was very much in the victimhood and I lived there for many, many, many years. So I was narrating uh, stories and mm -hmm. I wasn't being blessed with the stories. I was, I was actually um, communicating a per belief system, per mindset. Mm -hmm. um, so I would be saying, I am stupid. I am fat. I am ugly. I am useless. I am not good enough. And some of these reference points were actually from other people, beliefs from other people as well. Like, you know, people who pick on you in school or yeah. people who say things. And some people say things that they don't mean, mm -hmm. you know, they, they don't mean. Some people actually do things to connect. So a fellow wants to be, you know, the macho man in school and he wants to impress everybody. So he just spits out something and really his heart doesn't really mean it, but he's trying to impress. And we've <laughs> all been there, you know. Yeah. So, But I, I was playing stories over in my mind. And then, of course, you know, when situations arise, um, you know, I was I, I uh, was very close to my grandmother. She passed away. Uh, I had to deal with that. I was the first of her grandson in the house. I was like a celebration because she, all my other grand, um, my my uh, the grandkids and my cousins, they were all girls. So uh, when she passed away, you know, I remember speaking at her at her funeral. I was standing there. I was like, you know, she's she's not here anymore, but she was in there in the spiritual sense. Mm -hmm. but I'm dealing with this as well so there was many many combination of many different things you know it wasn't just one thing but um i just wasn't trained i wasn't trained yeah. in the power of the mind i yeah. wasn't trained in like um your physiology like you can actually move your body but you can move your mind i wasn't trained on the power of belief i wasn't mm -hmm. trained on the power of imagination mm -hmm. i wasn't trained on the story and the state that you can actually change your story which can change your state mm -hmm. and your state is how you feel I wasn't really trained on that. Um, and, and now, <laughs> which is uh, the things now swinging round about, listening to the message, life is going to show you signs. Yeah. Life will show you signs. Now, it's up to you to take the action. Yeah. I was prolonging and procrastinating for many years. To, you mm -hmm. know, I didn't, and then next thing, this just felt right. And quite yeah. often when you, when you be patient and you allow, next thing, signs become more clear. Yes. And this sign was like so, Seamus, to explain this and to express this, it was resonating of the highest vibration, which was unconditional love. Love. This man was offering me a position that I was of my wildest dreams. I always wanted to be part of, of something more. Mm -hmm. And here, 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 life was showing me in front of my face. Now I could have went and said, "No, a place safe." Ever since then, you know, I've spoken in front of thousands of people. My first, my first ever big talk was after a retreat. And there was one, uh, no, there was uh, 3,000 people at it. 3,000 people were, so I went from a checkout desk on my own to talking in front of a big audience. Mm -hmm. And how well belief. Have you ever done that before? Did you ever do that before? Or The only time I'd done that, Seamus, uh, was when I was on my lives and there was thousands of people watching. Right. I didn't actually do it physically, but yeah. through the training here, through the, uh, learn about the ph physiology, learn about the power of focus, learn about the power of imagination, learn about the power of certainty, um, conditioning and the repetition and repeating all yes, of the yes. conditioning. I've been able to move forward leaps and bounds. Now, I'm not perfect and I'm not yeah. pretending to be perfect. I'm still yes. learning and still growing, but I have moved forward in, in a 
and moved away from things and moved forward with things in my life that I want to move forward with. Mm -hmm. So from starting there three and a half years ago, uh, give us a wee bit of an example of one, how you've grown and, and after doing one of the talks, has anyone said anything well, to you? I'll share, I'll share, yeah, well, I'll share this. Um, the first time I started working with Stevie, Stevie says to me, James, I can train you to the best of your ability and you're going to be a leader in the world if you want to be, right? And mm -hmm. lead people, lead people through their life. But the first thing I want you to do is to clean the toilets. And I looked at him and I was like, what? Hold on, what? Clean the toilets? And he says, yes, James, what you put in, you get back. If you can clean the toilets to the best of the ability and when they're spanking clean, you can train people because it's what you put in that you get back. And that was a revelation. That was, and, and still to this day, when I, you know, it's something that we don't really think about, but think about this. Mm -hmm. What you put in, you get back. So from then, like I started, you know, doing admin, cleaning toilets back then. And I was doing all this, um, making peppermint tea for people, welcoming people into the office. And now I'm professionally trained where I have clients. I have professional. I'm professional trainers where I have private clients and I'm also part of the team here where we do talks and deliver talks and we do retreats. And I flew, I've been flown out to, uh, I actually went to New York and done my first ever talk in, in, in U, the USA and mm -hmm. in Yonkers, you know? Uh, so how did that all happen? Well, I took action. I took a leap of faith. Uh, that's one way. And uh, I'm sure it wasn't all rosy and, and perfect every day. Was there any days that you felt that, is it, is it really going to come through or like, or am I totally off guard there? Or did, you know, was there days that you really thought that this wasn't really going to work? That's an excellent question. Um, <laughs> to be honest with you, no. I'm on a roll today. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think. No, um, when I, when I look back on, on, on this journey, I taking that leap of faith mm. was the best thing for me. Um, yes, there was times where I was like, where's this going? And I was questioned, you know, but I stayed the pace. I, I stayed on track. Yeah. I stayed, I stayed with Stevie. And since then, um, a lot of things have changed in my life. I'm now engaged uh, mm -hmm. to a beautiful, my beautiful fiance. We're going to build a, a, a new home. Um, and build a home, you know? So, yeah, there was times where you were like, oh, where's this going? And sometimes you, but you just stay at the pace. Yeah. And, and, and re repeat the lessons and, and repeat mm -hmm. um, the teachings over and over again. And that's mm -hmm. what I do. I, I, still to this day, I'm still learning, still crafting, still yep. moving forward, you know? It takes a bit of grit to kind of go through that, you know, that stay empire because there's obviously this, and it's the same with a training program, a, like, you know, at the gym or, or a, a university course or whatever the case may be. But it's like, I'll take that, what you're saying and, and kind of use it on so many other perspectives, you know, um, it's like, and everybody could relate to that. Um, Absolutely. Like, you know, sometimes you're, maybe feeling uncertain about things and your self criticize you're, you're criticizing yourself. And it's good to, to, you know, it's good to question. It's good to question. And, and, and I question myself, if, if, what have I got, what have I got to lose? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'll, well, I'll end up back where I was and that's okay. Yeah. Like what have I got really to lose? Mm -hmm. you, you can know? always go back. You can always go back to Tesco. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and then, um, and then, and I then, actually, well, the only time I'll be back at Tesco is, and this is the truth, they actually, <laughs> they actually invited me to speak. Really? They actually invited me in to train their staff. <laughs> Very good. And Did you take true. them up on that? Did you take them up on that? I no, it never fell. It fell through because there was a few uh, challenges of it, and it never went. It never went anywhere. But I yeah. am now actually training uh, people and businesses and business owners and corporations and. Uh, Success people who are moving forward and training their staff about customer service and yeah yeah it's I'm doing that now anyway you know so no I'll never I'll never be back in that position um I'm always springing forward but I'm very mm -hmm. blessed for this I'm very blessed because mm -hmm. it happened for me you see mm -hmm. everything happened for me everything yeah. happened 
and, and communicating to, to our minds is that is so important. Because if you're not communicating that, then you're communicating that you're in the victim or everything's happening to you. Mm -hmm. I'm very blessed for my, my experiences. But um, two years ago, um, my car rolled off the road several times. I was involved in a major road traffic collision. Uh, I almost lost my life. Now you have to understand this, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wanted to end my life in, in, in when I was 22. Yeah. I am now in a position where I don't have control of my life. Mm -hmm. So I'm in I've experienced both. And the car's rolling off the road. I'm screaming. I'm praying. I'm asking, please help me. You know, I, first off, the, the guy, he broke a red light. And, you know, I forgive him for it. My car is rolling off the road. Mm. It's been battered and bruised. It lands on its side, right? Mm -hmm. It was going across the Portadown Northway. I thought the cars were going to bang into me. Thankfully, I survived. There was no broken bones or nothing. I swear to God, the, 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 the paramedic on the scene, I actually knew him. He actually called me Miracle Man on the, on the day. The road was closed for eight hours. And the funny thing is, the, the, the special thing about this story, I was going to a live event where I was speaking. Mm -hmm. Now, um, my life flashed before my eyes. I thought I'd never seen my mom, my dad, my sisters, my brother, who was in New Zealand. He's now part of our team. I thought I would never see them again. I thought I'd never see my mm -hmm. fiance again. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to die. That was it. My life was coming to a close. And I completely allowed everything to let go. Um, I went with the car. I don't know if people maybe heard this so Drunk, when people are drinking and they go in the car, they're actually more relaxed. People are going, why, are not, why, why, why weren't they hurt? Well, their body's actually loose. Yes. People so were I sleeping actually, too. Yeah. Well, sleeping. I actually let go of the resistance. Mm -hmm. So if I resisted, right, if I resisted the steering wheel, so if I put stress and tension in my body, I would have been hurt. Mm -hmm. I completely went with the car. I trusted. I allowed. And people call it, you know, as you said, God universe spirit divine yeah i don't know if, if anybody will ever be in that situation i pray that you're not mm -hmm. but some, sometimes it doesn't have to be a car crash yep because sometimes yep. it's a car crash in the name sometimes it's the it's the, the emotional challenge the emotional challenge so it's about totally allowing yourself mm -hmm. to hand life over life happened for you it's a reflection so the thing is it's up to us to be so I'm in my relationship with my fiance, right? I learn mm -hmm. from her. I grow with her, you know? Yeah. And it, so, for example, we're all in relationships with people. It doesn't matter if it's a partner, a close relationship, intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. This is a, a, even a relationship, a friendship, a bond, right? Brotherhood, mm -hmm. right? I'm learning from you. I'm growing from you. And as I listen, I'm actually appreciating, uh, respecting my own self, but also respecting you. So it's actually the law of reflection, mm -hmm. you know, um, which is really important. It's, 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 it's what you do that determines then how other people behave as well. Mm -hmm. Well, there's six human needs. There's six human needs. Mm. Um, one of them is connection, but another one is security. A lot of people who are too mm. secure then reflect that security out, you know? Mm -hmm. So with me and my car crash or any relationship or any experience now, if you're too secure and you're too holding on, there's a moment in time where you just have to let go mm -hmm. because we only learn from letting go truthfully, yeah. you know, by allowing and relaxing. Uh, we would say to our clients, and I'm going to say this to you as well, and everybody watching this, a relaxed mind is a winner's mind. If you want to be a winner in life, relax your mind, relax your body, you know, and there's ways in doing this. There's ways in doing this, of course. And this is what we teach people to do. But yeah. relax your mind. A relaxed mind is a winner's mind. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why I survived the car uh, incident, the, the divine intervention, I don't even call it a car crash. I changed the story and the narrative mm -hmm. and the perception around it. It was a divine intervention in my life. Oh, my God, I'm alive. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was high-fiving the police officers. I, I was hugging <laughs> oh Shout out to Jonathan and, and, and Rupert from Armagh Police Station. <laughs> Of God, she was, I was loving life. I was buzzing. Because I, knew, I knew I was very blessed. I could just see. Come on, high five. Can we do it again? Can we do it again? Yeah. <laughs> God. 
Uh, but now people think that's mad. But the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, and this is really important, I could have played into the drama. Yes. I could have played into the fear. I could have played into, oh, poor pity me. You know what? I was very blessed. A hundred percent. I then went to the live event. Yeah. And spoke about my situation, about the event. <laughs> this is what I'm <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was amazing. Did you, uh, you, so you told them about the car crash and stuff, did you? Yeah. Some people thought it was, it was, it was scripted. Some people were like, what? Now, some people had missed the live event. They were late because of the car incident, the car crash. But I walked in and I said to my fiance, I said, you're walking in here with me. She came out of school. She's a teacher. She left school to see me. I was flooding tears of joy, seeing her, seeing my family. I'll tell you this story. The, there was a, my laptop and my guitar were in the car. The car was brought away. Uh, the police had to bring me to the, the Kurgavan a and &E. And I remember saying to the police officers, saying, these were different police officers at this time. They said, I said to them, I would really love my guitar and my laptop because I have to go to a talk. I have to be somewhere. There are people flying in from Amsterdam. There's people flying in from Scotland to see me speak. There's people flying in from all parts, different parts. Of, there was people coming up from Cork from yeah. different parts to see us, to see me speak and to see us speak and to, for me to deliver this. And there's, there was other speakers. Stevie was there, and we had another man called Michelle. And I just planted that seed, right? With, with, with the intention that it could happen. Later on in the day, my father walked in, and behind him was the police officer with the guitar and the laptop. <laughs> and that was a clear sign for me. Whatever it was that day, it was like James. You're going to this event, no matter what any doctor tells you, no matter what any family member tells you, no matter what your fiance tells you, <laughs> you listen to your own intuition and your own heart mm -hmm. and you show up and you rock into that event because people have paid to hear you speak. And guess what? I walked in five o'clock in the evening with my beautiful fiance. By my, she wasn't my fiance at the time. Mm -hmm. we, we, we got engaged last year. This was in 2019. We walked in with certainty. I says, I'm what she says, I don't want to walk in. I says, Hannah, you're my partner. You're my love of my life. We're walking in together. And we walked in. And that's the truth. <laughs> so we have a morning routine. And this is actually a free download. Uh, one of our downloads, it's free. But I'll share it with the first three steps. This is the first three steps to what we call Stevie uh, designed this. And I've been using it for many, many years, and I'm particularly using it now since 2021 started, you know, mm -hmm. every day. So the first step is say yes to life in the morning. If you're not saying yes to life, then you're unconsciously, you're going to be saying no. Mm -hmm. Or the dread or the alarm bell, when the alarm bell rings, ah, you know, good morning, or I've got you, babe. You remember Groundhog Day? Yes. I've got you, babe. <laughs> Some people snooze button, and that's okay. Don't get out of your bed until you say yes to life. Try this. Do not don't try. Do it because you can yeah. try. To lift, try, try, or do. Uh, words are so important. And see the way I have to catch myself there myself. I'm my own man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. So try and try and you're either going to do it or you're not. Yeah. Trying is prob probability. It might or may not happen. Mm -hmm. So every morning, what I do now, I say yes to life. Yet, and here's the thing: why saying it? attach the feeling mm -hmm. so vibration we are all made up of energy so yes to life is going to kick start your day it's priming your day because if you're not saying yes then when you come to the situations in your day it's going to be challenging and here's the thing you're saying yes to life yes to the opportunities and yes to the challenges this is what i actually physically say yes yes to yes to life Yes to the opportunities. Yes to the challenges because the challenges make me grow. Mm -hmm. And that is like a, an affirmation, if you want to call it affirmation. Basically, affirmations, incantations, it's really important to feel it. Yes. It's not a performance. It's not that I'm and, telling you to say it. You yeah. have to feel it. It has to resonate with your heart. Uh -huh. It has to resonate with your soul. 
You know the song, I feel it in my fingers. <laughs> yes. I feel it in my soul. Yes. I didn't say toes, but soul. Yes. Make sure you're feeling it. Because if it's not feeling it, if you're not feeling it, then it's a performance. And it's probably someone else's tonality and voice. Mm -hmm. Don't do it in the arm uh, accent. Do it mm. in your own accent. Mm. You know, so that's the first step. Say yes to life. The second step is to count your blessings. Now, these are done in the first 90 seconds. This is only done in the first 90 seconds. So as you're lying in bed, just let you know, go back to the first one. If there's someone lying <laughs> beside you, like a, you, you don't want to go, Woo! yes! <laughs> 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 because you may get a... And you know, <laughs> or digging the side, uh, uh, your beautiful fiance or the partner that you're with, but feel it. So, I wake up in the mornings, I'm up early at quarter to six, 5 45. You know what I mean? I'm up at 5 45, seize the day, car pre diem in Latin. Car pre diem means seize the day, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I can serve my clients and my people and be better in my relationships with my beautiful mm -hmm, fiance mm -hmm. and listen to my more so the second one is count your blessings and what you're counting your blessings for first off is for yourself most people seek validation from outside of themselves most people look from outside external materialistic materialistic things yes. are people now yes appreciate all the people after you appreciate yourself love yourself first we are yeah. trained and taught sometimes to not put ourselves first, to mm -hmm. beat ourselves with sticks, emotional mm -hmm. sticks. So one thing that you do in the morning, I'm counting my blessings, thanking my body, thanking my mind, thanking my heart, thanking my, my nose for the smell. Every, every, I can smell yeah. your day, thanking the eyes and all this. And then you count your blessings for everything else in your day. Do you know what I mean? Or what's your pillow that you have? There's homeless people in Dublin and Belfast and other parts of the world that don't have a pillow. So mm -hmm. I say to people, don't tell me that you don't can't give thanks because you can. You have a pillow. You have a roof over your head. You have a car. If you have car keys, you have yeah. a car. No. That's the second step. The third step, and I said, this is going to all be done in 90 seconds. Yes to life, number one. Count your blessings, number two. The third step is to see your day. And this tool, this technique is so powerful. Mm -hmm. If you can take anything from this, from this uh, podcast, and we're all recording this live, I'm coming from the heart here, right? Nothing scripted in any way. See your day. See mm -hmm. how you want to be in your day. Mm -hmm. now, what you're using there is your power, the powerful tool, or the powerful muscle uh, of your imagination. Visualization. Yes, imagination. So, but here's the thing. You must attach a feeling to it. Right. Now, this is the key. Because as you're seeing your day, see yourself in your day, but see yourself with a base emotion. So, this morning, I see myself, right? This is the truth. I see myself on Zoom sessions with my clients. I see myself in the hub here, happy. Uh -huh. But I was attaching emotions. So, I see myself, you know, certain I see myself happy, joyful in my day. So what you're doing is you're priming your day in the morning. Yeah. The seeing your day is vital. Vital. Because when you see your day, what you're doing is you're using the power of your imagination. And what you're actually doing is you're scripting your life.